Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here, and today I will be running over the 2017 Gear Get Up. So, as of the moment, I still have this True Spec shirt, and it's nice, I do like it, but as some of you may know from my good buddy Riker, I was able to get a pair of actual cry precision trousers and the ranger green and the olive drab are two different colors so i kind of want to get the the shirt too it's a bit of an investment and i'll definitely take some time to get here but that's next up on the docket as far as really cool things go and those pants are fantastic so that being said i have moved the gear around a bit more because the thing is every day every month every few hours Oh, well, generally, constantly for me, I'm constantly thinking about what else I could do with my gear to make it easier to use, combined with more streamlined, easy access, and basically not wasting any weight or any space. Because a lot of people think, look at the gear, and they go, oh, well, I've got Molly here, I've got covered in everything I can until I'm roughly a barrel walking around with a small man inside. And, well, I've got actual plates and a helmet, and that adds a bit of weight, and although this probably it's a bit lighter than the real one I'm used to but still definitely you're gonna have a bit of weight with a gun every magazine is gonna weigh at least a pound each arguably so I've got three here one in the rifle and I've got an extra backup right here next to a tourniquet and this nifty little shotgun shell holder from 511 now on this one I've got goblin shells and I'm gonna do a quick rundown on all the gear I got and basically go over how I got to this sort of concept and everything and what we're going with. So, starting with headgear, I've got this nifty, the nifty Mitch, MSA Mitch, comfy. This cat, of course, from Takamine Song comes off, but we keep the back important stuff. Defense, Takamine watching your back, and genetically engineered cat girls or domestic ownership. Very important things. We've got our camera mount over here, some weapons grade waifu patch stuff, and yeah. And we, of course, we got Splatoon, both green and orange, on the sides because why not? So, relatively lightweight, comfy, uh, level 3 ballistic helmet. Underneath that, you take out the pads and everything, and I managed to get the sword to work, which I'm pretty sure I just threw this blouse over. Correct, I did. So here we've got our fancy, fancy, fancy sword -ins. We lower these here. We got some magic tape in case they're being used with a hat, because I also have a 511 hat. And all you do is you put these on over your ears, and I can't hear anything. And as far as the mic goes, so let me turn these on because it's going to drive me crazy if I don't. As far as the mic goes, the mic now sits in here. The radio pouch is built in to the LBT6094 cover button. So that sits in there. I have the clip adjusted so it fits onto the side of the kangaroo pouch. I then take this, I plug it in here, pop open this Velcro, and that sits comfortably in there. And with this setup, because this pin adapter actually makes it quite a bit longer, I can look around, and this micro, this little cord here, which if you set this up higher, generally gets in the way. If you turn it upside down, it's too long, it's too tight. This seems to be the perfect solution. I can quick press here to send out any communications to other people. And it's out of the way. Additionally, this all fits underneath the helmet quite comfortably. The top padding gets removed. And it's pretty much what I've been doing before. And then I come out the camera on the side of the helmet. However, on these Swordens, they have been modified to have a uh, camera holster right here. Holster. <laughs> camera holder for the uh, contour set on the right side. So I can simply connect it to the headset and avoid all the extra, uh, let's call it bulk of the helmet. The helmet is great in realistic situations, but as far as airsoft goes, it, I mean, it builds your neck muscles, but also kind of adds weight and bulk, and definitely girth your head, increasing the chances of catching a headshot, which, although arguably might have been negligible, particularly from a handgun, it is enough to cause you problems, because a hit to even the pinky in airsoft is instant death. So, that being said, I'll take these off now, because I'm... Well, I don't want to kill the battery, and there's a lot of stuff to go over yet. Still, so, uh, taking these amazing little pieces of beauty and engineering marvels off. Continue on. So, of course, you got the normal stuff here. Here we have a quick little pull tab. This is probably the least important of all the gear, but this just comes up. Dead rag. So, 
Simple. Three magazines in the kangaroo cover because really, I mean, you don't need too much more than three. And these are 120 round mags. Realistically, you'd have 30. And 30 is pretty cool. I like 30, but this is 90 plus another 30 in the rifle itself is the 120. And just for good measure, I feel like it's important to have this extra mag off on the side here. Now this one's facing down because being far back, pulling it down is going to be the easiest way to access, whereas pulling it up would be incredibly uncomfortable on the shoulder, as well as exposing my elbow to incoming fire, assuming the bunker I'm in is quite small. Now the shotgun shells here are kind of nice because I have the dangler attached right here. Now in the dangler, I have some hearing protection and a light, but most importantly, I have my goblin. Now, the goblin is basically a powerful one-shot, breech-loaded super shotgun. No, 12 BBs, so practically two shots of the Tokyo Marui uh, M870 breacher on the six burst mode, otherwise it'd be four shots of a normal triple burst. So all that in one go. And what's great about this is with the rifle behind my back, I can also draw a handgun. Now I have the option to clear, pop a corner if there's multiple targets, pop a nice little blast at them, and then put some extra rounds on them with the pistol, if need be. And that sits nicely in the dangler there. You know, so we've covered this side, extra tourniquet. I've got two of them. There's another one in the IFAC. The IFAC, on a more realistic situation, will have a shiv attached to it. Fairly ironic for a life-saving piece of gear, but occasionally you got to be able to stab someone, and this was the easiest place to keep it. And additionally, there's an extra thunder bee on the side here. Probably not going to get used because not too many people like being horrified, especially when they're not wearing swordens. But nice to have right here, although it's not my only grenade, as we'll get to. Additional on the back is just the modular assault pack, which is not properly um, folded up and neatly organized because I'm still going to put some stuff in there. I still need to fill up the hydro pack. Although this is a fantastic little piece of war gear if you were to need something. It's all pretty much just a super camelback. They could hold other stuff so I could put bolt cutters in there in the event that we were doing a real operation. Maybe one day, people. Maybe one day. So, all that said, moving down to waist level, I am actively waiting on a new belt to come in, which is the, uh, is it the HSGI Slim Grip Battle Belt, which is sufficiently smaller than the uh, Sure Grip. It's the same deal, pretty idea. So instead, I've got 5.11 gear, which fits quite nicely over your standard shooter belt. See our shooter belt here? Little Cobra belt buckle, Cobra belt and everything. And basically we got our extra pistol mag right here. I need to get a secondary one to fit in this side. And a really basic dump pouch. Now this dump pouch is okay, but it is not the BDS dump pouch that I've grown to love very much because it has this set grip and everything goes in there nicely. Now I want to swap this out with this dump pouch, but this one wobbles around. So the slim grip having two bits of molly going sideways, I'll be able to pop this on there and it will provide me with all my gear carrying needs and being this close to the front will not interfere with the assault pack. All in due time. So simple on the left, on the right side, you have the addition of this 511 shotgun shell holder. Holds 25 shells, a box of shotgun shells. However, in the event that I'm not using a shotgun, which would be arguably right now, this can unzip this way and inside we have two cyclone grenades stacked on top of each other. So I can just jam my hand in there and pull out a grenade. And then after that one's been disposed of, jam my hand in there, pull out a second grenade. So, considering the fact it's built for shotgun shells, this little $30 pouch here is absolutely phenomenal for carrying two grenades in a very small and neat organized fashion. As well as the fact that the zipper, it, it's not the quietest, but it's relatively quiet and far better than Velcro. Finally, we have our Safari Land drop leg with the uh, flex adapter holster. Being incredibly easy to draw and reholster, simple to use, very effective, and on the inside we have two Allen keys for any gear adjustment that might come about. Now, honestly, that's just about everything that attaches immediately to your body. So that being said, last thing we have is we have our SR-16 by VFC. Absolutely fantastic weapon I bought off of Tesla Gojira. And I've got it marked right now at the T8 mark for attachment of my little Bushnell red dot sight. Now the red dot's, the red dot's fantastic, particularly for a close quarters engagement, but the iron sights, 
It's what I shot with. It's what I'm most comfortable with, although it's not as quick or easy to acquire a target. And with a lot of the quick snap shooting that goes down on Okinawa, it really wouldn't make too much sense to try to line up very nice 500 meter shots with a weapon that might get 50 meters on a good day. And the red dot's really gonna help get those pop shots in nice and quick before they can duck back behind cover. And additionally, I have a VTAC two-point sling that I've done reviews on. Very cozy, attached to the buttstock in the front. So it's comfy here. I can adjust it super tight if I so desire, which does make it a bit easier to use a handgun. Although I suppose you could do just as well with it loose. Not a lot of wiggle, not too much going on. So it's a lot easier to clear those uh, side bunkers to the left, whereas a long gun gets in the way. And additionally, we'll Quick little trick here, flip it around the back, out of the way, and it can even be tightened to make it less problematic. Sitting low right now, tighten this up, sits far better and out of the way. And with that free, engage things with the pistol, move around freely, and in the event that this was a really nice, more realistic field, there'd be ladders and stuff to climb. And then as soon as you're in position, if you're not using your handgun, free it up and get rounds back on target with a quickness. So, let's hand back through here. That's pretty much all of the battle gear I have right now, with the exception of the, uh, oh, actually I might as well pull these out real quick. So, I'm still using my basic mechanics gloves, which, I mean, I say basic, but these things are utterly fantastic in every imaginable way. Comfy, tan, and they do a lot for protecting your hands because in airsoft what's coming before your plate carrier and almost everything else is going to be your hands and arms and your very soft squishy tender fingers and getting shot in the pinky or the thumb sucks i guess it really depends on how much jewels you're being hit with or how much feet per second the rounds are traveling but solid protection some uh rubberized protection stuff here a little bomb thing all sorts of fanciness padding Relatively inexpensive gloves, incredibly comfortable, and I positively love them. I wish I had more. And then, of course, finally, I'm not going to bother taking them out of the case right now, but I've got my red ESS suppressors. The suppressors being thinner on the side, so they fit comfortably under the swordens. And that's basically a complete run-through of all the uh, gear I'm working with right now. Very nice, very awesome, enjoy it very much. And, yeah, really the biggest trick I learned is keeping this down here, these, uh, pinch claw little holster things work quite well. It's not going anywhere. Though additionally, I could put some 550 cord or something through these uh, molly right here and use that to sort of wrap around it and help keep it in place even better. So, without further ado, that is the rundown for the beginning of 2017. So you know, I'll get that shirt and swap that out and maybe add another magazine and then fancier belt. We'll see how it goes, but who knows? So, Stay tuned to see how all that goes, and I will look forward to actually getting to play at some point this year when it's not busy with work and I actually have friends who can come out and everything will go jolly good and lovely. So that's all I got for you guys today. Stay chivalrous. I'll see you in the next video, everyone. Cheers.